Uh, Hazel is watching out the window with a toy. Hang on. Hazel! Oh, there's another puppy out there. Off to a good start, I think. So while filming this video, I began to have some mic troubles and ended up losing a lot of this kind of footage. So I am here from the future end of filming to kind of fill in the gaps and just talk you through what happened, at least in the beginning part of this video. Later on, I decided that I didn't need to use the mic anymore. I was starting to get a little bit suspicious about it. And so the last half of the video has all the good audio, but this first part was, uh, lacking entirely. <laughs> so before I started filming this video, I had just moved back to the cabin here and I was feeling kind of stuck. I wasn't feeling very motivated and there wasn't a lot that I wanted to do. And so I decided that perhaps kind of taking the time to make the home a little more autumn-y and in the season would be a good way to just kind of kickstart the energy I needed to just move forward. And I thought, why not bring you all along with me? I decided it would be best to do this in about three steps. First, I wanted to make a pumpkin bread, then I wanted to make a protective autumn wreath, and then, of course, carve some pumpkins. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna make the bread. Start by separating dry and wet ingredients, so let's get started. Kitchen witchery is one of my favorite forms of the craft. I find it to be exceptionally versatile and really useful when it comes to personal spells. This is looking pretty good to me. It's also really effective in a way similar to how a smoke cleanse can be, filling a space with what you intend to. Like a smoke cleanse, the scent that comes from baking will fill a space and carry the properties with it. So making something that's in tune with the season really helps to ground the energy here and make it align better with the earth. Kitchen magic is also a wonderful way to share spells and magic with other people and those that you care about. I ended up cutting this recipe down to half just because I personally don't need two loaves of pumpkin bread, but oh, it is amazing. Now all I need to do is add the dry ingredients and pop it in the bowl and, uh, or well, uh, pan and bake it. I know a lot of you have tried my chamomile sweet rolls that are on here, and those are one of my favorite examples of sharing spell work with others. It's just an easy, simple, digestible gift and it's really good for bringing magic internally. So I like to use kitchen magic for a lot of healing things as well, or at least things to do with the mind and body. Not to mention, it's also a really grounding and beautiful form of practice that I think is really accessible to a lot of people. She smells amazing. Now for just some finishing touches and then off to the oven she goes. Now, at this point, I started having suspicions of my microphone and I just tossed it. Well, put it on the kitchen table and no longer was using it for filming. So while that's in the oven, I'm going to go grab uh, some of the last things that I need to gather to make the wreath. Earlier today, I gathered the blackberry branches and I gathered up some calendula flowers. So all I really need now is to get some more rose hips. And I'm not really sure if I'm gonna take you along with me on that yet because all of my neighbors seem to be walking around right now and this is an embarrassing thing to do. So I may just go do that and pull them on in here. We'll find out. 
I felt too awkward. Are we surprised? Probably not. But anyways, I got the, uh, I got the rose hips, so we're golden at least for that. These are such a beautiful part of the rose. Honestly, I think they're one of my favorite parts. And last year I ended up trying to make a jelly out of these, similar to what I did with the milk thistle, but it did not quite go to plan. So I think I will be trying to do that again this year, though I will be sharing that on my other channel if anybody is interested. Alrighty, so the plan right now is to build the base of the wreath out of these blackberry vines. I gathered about seven pretty long ones, and I feel fairly confident in being able to weave them together, but we'll see how that goes. Then I just want to tuck in these flowers and the rose hips. And now, because I don't know why, I thought I'd just take you along while I uh, try to finish wrapping these thorny branches around and just kind of talk about the reasons why I'm using the plants that I am. And oh my goodness, do I keep poking myself. So it is, it's been quite the adventure so far. Also, the bread has been in the oven for a bit now. It just smells so good in here. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But let's talk about brambles and all of these things and why I'm choosing to use them even though they are kind of a pain literally to work with. Anything that is thorny, blackberry brambles or rose bushes, raspberry plants, anything like that, all hold protective properties. The thorns themselves are what hold the protective properties and I really enjoy adding blackberry thorns specifically to spells that need some extra sharpness. They're what I prefer to use in most uh, autumn or fall wreaths because they are rather abundant at this time. They're still very flexible, but they're uh, starting to get kind of woody and perfect for this purpose. Hence having the blackberry as the base and the rose hips a surrounding. Alrighty, so I think this is the best that we'll have. It's a little bit wonky in some of these areas and not a perfect circle, but I kind of like that. I think it makes it unique and beautiful. So now just to start tucking in the other flowers. It is so beautiful just like this. I kind of want to just leave it as the blackberries and rose, but I am determined to add the flowers and we will decide a little bit later, but my goodness, is it just lovely. Alrighty, I guess I was proven wrong. The flowers do actually add something and since they'll dry a bit before you know, no time, I guess, in no time. They'll be a little more subdued in their color, but wow, it's beautiful. And here's a bit of a full look. I think I'm going to try to hang it from this point here, but I don't really have anything to hang it with yet. So uh, we'll see if I get that up today or tomorrow, but either way, I will film it for you. Oh my goodness, it looks beautiful and smells amazing. Alrighty, so now that the wreath is up, the bread is made, I think all that's left to do is carve some pumpkins. <laughs> but I'm gonna do that with my girlfriend. I'll film a few bits of it, but uh, I kinda just wanna enjoy the evening with her, so. And you!
I know they're so cool. Alrighty, and so here we are for a recap. In this video, I wanted to create an autumn home. So I took the time to make pumpkin bread, create a protective autumn wreath, and carve some pretty awesome pumpkins. It was really what I needed to kickstart that energy and align myself with the seasons. And it just kind of gave me that spark that I needed. So thank you so much for watching and now for my end of video spiel. If you haven't seen it already, I would really appreciate it if you checked out my other channel. There I share vlogs of my daily life, a lot of the regular magic and simple things along with adventures and I don't know, naturey things. And I know it's not for everybody, but if you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbal profiles, and some other fun things, and it's really what keeps things running over here. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well, and I hope this inspires you to maybe make some pumpkin bread or just get in tune with the seasons.